Hello, I'm Eric. Welcome back to another episode of From Prison to the Streets. In today's episode, we are making a prison shank. So, more specifically, we're making a poker. This is what we're going to end up with. A poker <clears throat> is something that is not used for slicing, it is used for stabbing. This is not something with a big blade. It is just a shank. That's it. It's just, you know, a small piece of metal or plastic. The smaller, the better as far as diameter, because the smaller it is, the more likely you can get between ribs, stuff like that. Something this small can be really dangerous because it can, it can go deep inside of a person deep enough to damage internal organs and it's hard to find the puncture wound with something like this so this is a very dangerous weapon this is deadly let me tell you how we made them be sure to like and subscribe and don't try this at home hi guys as you can imagine, one of the things there's no shortage of in prison is chain link fence. And this is what a lot of pokers are made out of. Poker, shank, whatever. It's basically just a pointy weapon. And in prison, we would go out to the yard. And what we would do to get a piece of chain link fence is we would use fingernail clippers. Now... I don't want to ruin my fingernail clippers, so I just have a pair of loppers here. And I'm going to cut a piece of this fence, if I can, maybe. Sorry if I sound a little bit out of whack. I'm kind of sick. I'm actually quarantined at the moment. So you're going to cut it up there, and then you're going to find that same piece further up. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go all the way up here. Okay, and I'm gonna cut it up here as well. There we go, that's cut. All right, now I should be able to get this piece out. And it, it's a little bit of a challenge on prison, the way we would disguise this in prison, the way we would disguise pulling a piece out like that. We would sit against the fence with our backs against it, and we would put our hands behind our back, or we would have a buddy sit with us, and we would have our hand behind him fucking with the fence while he kept an eye out for the guards. But now I have a long piece of wire that I can use for a shank. Okay, I have my piece of, of wire that I harvested from that fence, and so this is going to be the basis of our poker. Now, it's not very hard metal. It's pretty soft. It's pretty malleable. I can bend it into a rough shape that I want. So, fairly easy to manipulate. There we go. Like so, and there we go. You have a roughly straight piece of metal, roughly. We need to straighten it out a little bit more though, um, but being that this is so malleable, you know, you would think that maybe this couldn't be used as a weapon, but it has enough strength to it that it is still something that could be used in a fight. It can be very rough. So how would we shape this better in a prison environment? We'd hammer it with a boot on concrete. So that's what we're going to do. All right, guys, listen, uh, the camera was not rolling for whatever reason, I thought it was rolling, but I guess it didn't start. So, I'm going to show you how we're how I'm shaping this, and you'll see that I already have it shaped somewhat. 
but I left a few kinks in there after I noticed that the camera wasn't rolling so I could go back and show you how I'm doing this. Now, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. You have this boot, and a boot makes a good hammer in prison, but sometimes you're working with something that's kind of flexible, so sometimes it doesn't work that great. You see it bent it a little bit, not perfectly. So in prison, we would use whatever was around us as a tool. So in this case, I'm gonna use this crack in this concrete to shape the metal. I'm gonna use the concrete itself. Now, in prison, I might use the concrete, but I also could use the bed frame. I could use my bunk. It's basically a steel slab to shape the metal. I could use uh, the hinge in my locker to shape it. I could use that. Basically, whatever's around, I could even use the bars on my own cell to shape the metal if I wanted to. And I'm basically just using that as a lever so I can get some purchase on that, on that wire and get it to bend where I want it to. Now we need one end of this to be fairly straight. I got a little hook on that end. I got a little hook on that end. And so I'm going to see which, which end I can get straighter because I'm going to want to sharpen this and I'm going to sharpen it on this concrete probably. Although one of the other things that we did in prison, if you really want to make your knife sharp, all the toilets in the cells are made out of stainless steel. And there's a Bible verse that talks about sharpening iron with iron. Well, the same is true for steel. You just rub it and it puts a very fine edge on the knife. Take some time, of course, but now that end's fairly straight now. So I might end up using that end, which, I mean, you don't need it to be perfectly straight. You need it straight enough so that it's going to go in without bending as far as whether or not it goes in clean. Clearly, if you're trying to stab someone, you don't care if it's comfortable for them when the knife goes in between their ribs or something. So, you just want it to go in without bending. What's cool about this, this will, well, I, I wouldn't say that it's cool. Hurting people isn't really cool, but what is, <coughs> what is useful about this in a situation where you have to use it if your life is threatened by somebody else in prison, if they're wearing a homemade stab vest, sometimes guys would make stab vests out of magazines. <clears throat> this is a small enough poker that it'll go through the magazine. We're not going to make this pretty, but we will make it a little bit more efficient, more like a knife. I might sharpen this a little bit while I'm here, though. On a side note, if you look at the concrete, Sharpening on concrete makes marks. So when a officer does a cell check or something, they will actually look for that. So you gotta make sure you do this in an area where you can hide it fairly easily. That way they don't see that and shake you down and find your knife. All right, guys, we're back inside. I got my poker here. Now, the point on this isn't very refined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some sandpaper. And we actually did have sandpaper in prison. Guys would steal it from the maintenance shop and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna take that and I am going to give myself a sharper tip. Okay, we have a decent point on here. That, if you were in a hurry in prison, would be good enough. However, in prison, like if, if I'm feeling paranoid or something, I would spend several days putting something nice together, making it real sharp. But for this video, this will work just fine. Now I need a handle. So you want this to be able to be concealed for an ex to an extent and you also don't want it so long that it bends easily when you use it. So some of this excess 
You're gonna fold back just like that. Like one of those old wire fly swatter handles. All right. And to make the handle, to finish it, there's a couple things you could do. You could um, use masking tape. You could use saran wrap, like I showed you some of the things that we did in, with saran wrap in my last video. In this case, I have a piece of that t-shirt that I ripped in my last video. We're going to use this to make ourselves a nice little handle. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be functional. That's the main thing. And this, this barb, you don't want that jumping into your hand when you're stabbing somebody. So you're going to go ahead and tie this on and then you're just going to wrap and make sure that that point is not something that's going to get into your hand. So I got it tied on. Now I'm just going to start wrapping. Not like Slim Shady wrapping, like wrapping a t-shirt handle on a prison shank. There's a difference. And it's already wrapping up nice. Like I said, this isn't about being pretty. You see these knives and stuff that are tactical knives and self-defense knives and stuff. I'll tell you what, if you're in a pinch, you'd be real surprised at what can be deadly. Now, I'm putting kind of a, a little bit, I guess you'd call it a pommel if you were an actual knife maker. I'm putting a little ball of cloth on the end of this so my hand doesn't slip off. And then when I get it where I want it, I'm going to feed that end through this loop. I'm going to tie it off. I'm going to make a knot. There we go. Now, I have that. There's one more thing I'm going to do with this. One more step I'm going to take. Like, this isn't going to come apart. If I stab someone with this, it's going to be a very effective weapon. So, my one last thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to tie a lanyard on it. This is, I'm basically just going to make a loop on here. And the reason for that is if you're getting down, if you're stabbing someone and your hand starts getting bloody or whatever in the heat of the moment, this knife might come out of your hand and you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to put a little loop on here, see how it fits my hand, about like that. So. Easy enough that I can slip it off, but not so easy that it's just going to fly off. And then I'm going to tie that so it's secure, so it won't move anymore. I tie it until it does what I want it to. Okay, there you go. You have a lanyard. So if this falls out of your hand, you're not going to lose your shank. And you have a nice poker. So that's all you need. A lot of people would put a smaller handle on here, but I like to be able to hang on to mine. So, there you go. That's a, that's a prison shank. So, yeah, that'll kill somebody. Thank you for watching. I'm Eric. This has been another episode of From Prison to the Streets. I'll see y'all later. Right. Right,